So we have from now until July 15th, and we're hoping to, once we gather this up, that we have a team of four people, we'll be going over these grants and then deciding and hopefully launching those announcements by fall in service for the project. So we really were inspired by Open Oregon by looking at categories instead of just saying to faculty, hey, write a OER grant, like, take a crack at it, you know, see what you think. We decided to, to really go down into categories. So these categories are an adoption. So similar to, I'll just grab the sociology book because it's lighter. <laughs> it's lighter. <laughs> uh, it's something that's already in existence and you just want to adopt it. You can simply do that. Some faculty have already done that and are talking about doing this. Um, one example of that would be chemistry. Okay. Um, if you are thinking of doing something where you want to take something that's already in existence, but you want to revise and remix that and put your own, for lack of a better word, slant on it, if you will, there's a category for that. Or if you're thinking, hey, and we've heard from some faculty that have said, the stuff that's out there, 
I'm concerned about the quality. I don't really, well, I don't like it. It's not for me. So I'm going to create my own piece. Great, you can do that too. So we create a category for that. And then what we really like is we have talked about a category for program support. So this would be for um, not necessarily creating material, but how do we support and create that material? I mean, support the material that's created. One example, what if we had a Mountain View Community College repository for everything that was OER? So people would know it's what's in existence and also link that repository to places like OpenOrgan or any place else that would have a repository. That's not limited to that, but that's just an example. Anything you want to add on the categories? Um, well, we could talk about the amount of money. Sure. Um, do you want to go back to the web page? Sure. We've got um, sort of ballpark amounts of money per category. Yeah, so proposal categories right here. Can um, we so increase the size of that too? Yep. This one. We're being green here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's great. I mean, the, the email is in our inbox. The so email is in your inbox. Start. I can confirm it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can always, when in doubt, you know, just ask me. Yeah. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Better. 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 Okay. Yeah. okay. So, adoption. If you just want to take some OER that is in existence and you just need some, some compensation for the amount of time that it will take you to convert your course um, or redesign your curriculum to use it, then um, we're, we've got some. It'll be 500 bucks per person, but if you're going to do it with a team of people, um, it'll cap out at $2,000. So, for example, really quick. So, if I teach Reading 115, I have one section, I have three colleagues that also teach it. We all decide, hey, let's just adopt this and teach it. Then, you know, that's where we got to the 2000 So, up to yeah. four for the same course. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the, the more time that it will take you, uh, the more money that we will, that we will award. Um, so for revising and remixing, we've got a range of $800 to $3,000. Um, it's going to depend on the proposal. Um, as well as the creation, it'll start at $1,500 to $3,000. Um, and then for program support, because that's such a wide open, you know, like, we're not quite sure what people are going to provide. It could be something really involved or it could be something short and sweet. Um, a range of $200 to $3,000, okay? And the way we're going to decide this is, you know, $10,000 doesn't go very far. It's not, I mean, it's $10,000, you know, it's a lot of money, you know, for one person, but um, depending on how many applications we get, what we're going to do is we're going to just look at them all as a comprehensive group. And we're going to decide um, the awards based on the greatest impact, I have this written somewhere specifically, greatest impact to students, cost savings, here? Well, for example, you know, if we have something that, and this will make sense, we have a, a course that has high enrollment in a bunch of sections, we're really going to look at that because the impact's going to be greater, right? It's going to impact more students. So if we're talking about, um, you know, an elective course that's only offered twice during the academic year, we, we're not saying that that wouldn't get funded. We're just saying we're looking at what's the greatest impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got um, alignment with requirements for applicants. And we'll go over that next. Um, the direness of the need met and maximum cost savings to students. And also boosting enrollment, retention, and completion. You know, because that's really important here. Um, so we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll take a really comprehensive approach. And we will be there. So for the requirements for applicants. Um, okay, so applicants have not been awarded any other OER grant funding for the specific course that you're applying for here. Because we're aware there are lots of grant opportunities. We've got 15 people from Mount Hood that are currently working on Open Oregon grants right now. We didn't want to exclude them, especially if they're in a team application for one of these grants. Um, the project needs to meet a demonstrated need, so in your application, please demonstrate the need. Um, all work produced um, needs to have a Creative Commons license on it, an, an open license, and we will, the library will help you with the licensing aspect. So if that kind of freaks you out, don't, don't stress it, just come to the library and we'll help. It, it's just, 
you just need a license that allows people to legally make a copy of your work and edit your work and redistribute your work. Did I miss anything? I know that wasn't that was, but I yeah. think that covers it all. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there's a lot we could talk about with licensing, but not in this session. Um, so, as with everything that we put online here at Mount Head, it needs to be ADA accessible. We've got plenty of support for you from the Office of Disability Services and um, uh, our accessibility coordinator in IT. Um, we'll need applicants to track the money saved, right? So how much money were your students needing to pay before on the previous course materials versus after your OER implementation? Um, we ask to um, that applicants or, or the people that are awarded money give a, a very low key presentation quarterly for the for the term of your project to the textbook affordability team. Not just the, the subcommittee, the four people that's reviewing this grant, but um, to the whole textbook affordability team. And we'll schedule that. But it's nothing major. We just want to know where you're at with some status updates. Um, and then once the project is complete, to give a comprehensive presentation on your work here through the Teaching and Learning Center. Um, we've got, um, let's see, Amy is working on an OER, oh wait, you have your OER directory, what do you, do you call it a directory? Um, the it's the Open Oregon Resources page. Resources so page. It's the, it's the place where we're um, collecting known adoptions of I know no cost or low cost solutions. So um, it's openoregon.org slash resources. There are currently 130 entries on this page. And it's not exactly a peer review, but it's a peer endorsement because it tells you, okay, at the college down the road, here's what they're using for, you know, this is 101 or whatever. Yeah, yeah help yourself. No, I was looking to see if it was already written down or I have to write this out myself. No, it There's won't. no promotional literature so, with that written down. Here it is, just so you can see it. OpenOregon.org slash resources. There's a form. You can click on this form and then submit what you have. Yeah. And then there's lists here on what people have done from other institutions. Just a way of putting it out into the world. And um, what, you know, when people are awarded grants, and we will you know, we'll serve as a resource. The textbook portability team will serve as a resource for any questions that you have over, over the time frame. OpenOregon.org forward slash resources. So this is just a place when the work is completed from these grants. Just put it up here so that you're telling the world and you're telling your colleagues throughout Oregon that this is what you've done. I'm also I'm happy to fill out the form on your behalf. So if you just send me the information, I can add it for you. And I love that it's searchable so you can get an idea of already what's out there. Yeah. And the back end was um, done by a um, programmer named Tamara Marnell, who was at Portland Community College, and now she's at Central Oregon Community College, and she's still working for a library director that wants her to be able to help with OER projects, which is great. Yeah. Okay, so just working through the rest of the requirements. So if funded, be willing to submit your course project for peer review through Open Oregon. So this is I understand something that you've been working on um, recently, um, some sort of peer review process um, to address any concerns about quality, because I know that that's a concern. Um, and then the project timelines, right? Like, so whatever people propose, um, just tell us how long you think it's going to take you, and uh, you know, if it'll take as long as it takes. Well, we also really want to be flexible with that because we know that faculty have various workloads, right? Yeah. So, depending on what you're teaching in the fall, in the winter, and spring, or maybe you have a lighter term, something. So, it's going to depend on what, what people want to do and we want to be flexible with that. I think that's really a great move um, because I think some other OER grant things have had really strict timelines and it's really hard, like you said, to, to adhere to some of that. So, that's a really I really like that requirement. That's really open-ended for that. So. 
Yeah, we're trying to design this in a way that makes life easy for faculty or as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions ever, just email me or email Dave. Um, we're here to support pretty much every aspect of your process with OER or textbook affordability in general. But this is specifically an OER grant here. And then I do also want to state that I've been talking with some faculty that you know, maybe they submitted to Open Oregon this past grant cycle and they, they had really great proposals, but they didn't, they were not awarded. You know, we're also reaching out to faculty too. So if you're hearing this and you're like, hey, I, I was bummed, I didn't get it, you know, this is an opportunity for you to tap into monies that, that we've made available internally. So we hope that you reapply. Please reapply. So is Dr. Durr going to renew this? She, she wanted us to be clear that this is one time money because it came out of the Yoshida donation. Um, she's very supportive, but of course I have no idea what kind of budget she has at her discretion. But, um, yeah, we'll for right now, this is, this is one thing. I'm sorry? We'll try to have another round of open work on the next thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is the beginning of lots of OER grants in general. This is just happens to be one source of funding from uh, a donation that's made to the college. I think the last thing I just want to highlight. So this page here, it's on the lib guide for OER. Um, a lot of tabs. <laughs> but the actual, so I sent the email out this morning, but the files are linked here. And these bookmarks, if you don't have one of these, that's the URL. limited to any particular employee group. Um, at anybody that works at Mount Hood is eligible to apply. This seems like a really great process that you've got. I'm, I'm excited to see what you, how you've adapted from the Open Oregon Grant. We did use yours as a, as a guide. And I used Affordable Learning Georgia as a guide. So <laughs> yes. you know, it's nice to <laughs> see what you're doing and the changes that you're making to yeah. make it very specific to Mount Hood, but this looks awesome. And that right there is a beautiful case in point of how open source yeah. content oh, yeah. works, right? Exactly. It, it's all, right, you know, um, I, I'll put a CC by license on, on this yeah. grant yeah. as well, so that whoever, you know, comes along next that needs to design an OER grant can use this just as much as we used AVs or, uh, yeah. 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 It really fosters collaboration. And in terms of the Open Oregon grants, um, you know, because there's such good leadership here for OER stuff, um, we've got MHCC faculty in every grant category of the Open Oregon grant cohort right now, and there were so many good applications that we couldn't fund everybody, so it's so nice to know that there's a place for those overflow people to go. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, so we were, the, were the uh, Oregon OER grants more sensitive financially? It was equivalent. It was um, adopt as is was 500, um, revise or remix category two was 1500, create was 5000, and then our fourth category was other because we thought we couldn't anticipate every kind of proposal we would get, and that one was like let us know how much you need to do your project. Yeah. There was a cap. There was a cap. Yeah. <laughs> I think the cap was 30,000. We're going to switch gears. Uh, there's other money that's available that's mm -hmm. come from the Higher Education Coordinating Commission on um, OER grants, which is fantastic. Just to give you a quick preface, um, Mount Hood has jumped on this. Al Sagala has, of course, worked with uh, Lucian, and so we are in conversations with them right now who will be helping us write a grant from Mount Hood to apply for HEC monies. So we are my specific role is hopefully to garner interest from faculty on if you are interested in putting you into that grant. 
here's the positive spin. Positive spin is the the RFP on this is, su is substantial. It's, it's quite large. Um, we've sent that out. It's through the TLC. You can take a look at it. It's there. Uh, but Elucian's primarily going to write that grant. So all we really need from you, essentially, and I'm, I'm paring this down, is a project proposal, um, what you're thinking about, what course you're thinking about, how many students it would impact, what would be the financial impact, what's the cost of the, of the book. Very, very similar, actually, to our TAP grants and what's Open Oregon. Pretty much similar process, except we're just routing it through a different uh, funding source. Mm -hmm. Do you have folks that are already interested that have said, like, yeah, this course, because it's for yes. 15 high level courses, do you mind sharing? Yes. We have one course right now, and I just spoke with uh, him outside before this meeting, and that's Math 111. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, and there are, I don't want to misspeak on this, especially because I'm making videos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the man is watching. There, there are a plethora of sections. So it's it's a high impact. It's very many grants. Yeah. It's right here. It's a good bank of specific word. Right, right. Do you have a login for the internet the username you have? Because I'm not an MHCC company. Oh yeah, sure. So um, a little background on the HEC grant. So HEC Higher Education Coordinating Commission, right there in Salem. Um, House Bill twenty eight seventy one passed last July, so about a year ago allocated $700,000 for two years, two fiscal years of the state. Um, and so that there was a steering committee, and Amy and I sat on that, along with a lot of other people from lots of other um, state institutions, educational institutions throughout Oregon. Um, and then after um, we came up with the general parameters, HEC disbanded us before it became a conflict of interest. So that then HEC then made some further decisions on how to set this grant up. And um, they opened it up on April 15th. Um, the, we submitted a couple clarifying questions by the deadline, which was last week. Um, the, the due date for any applications to this grant is May 27th. Really not a lot of time, but like Dave said, the good news is that we actually don't really have to write the grant because we have a Lucian to do it, and I've been working with them, and they're super smart, they're very sharp people, and, and they're gonna make our lives easier. So we need an expression of interest. An expression of interest would be um, the easy thing, right? And then and then a, a more formal proposal. Um, they are, so this money is limited to the highest enrolled courses, is it, I think 15 highest enrolled courses um, throughout Oregon. Um, it was quite a statistical feat to, you know, figure out which courses with different call numbers, or call numbers, different uh, course numbers, <laughs> this is like the library, different course numbers, um, uh, which, which ones are really the same class, right, at different institutions, uh, they go by different names, so how do you measure those in an equivalent way, in a statistically meaningful way? Um, so Heck did that, and um, let's see, what else? What are the top three? I'm looking for the list. Um, because this includes all universities. Yeah. Right? Four all 24 public schools. And, you know, there's no surprises on the list. It's exactly what you would expect. All yeah. right. I'm looking all right. for. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any Okay. Ones? Let's see. I so don't think so because they were looking at the ones mm -hmm. that contribution mm -hmm. transfer degrees mm -hmm. um, and businesses. An elective if you're thinking of the AOT. So we have yeah. a, a camera set up. Yeah. 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 I can't see. Yeah. Okay. So we've got um, Math 111, um, or College Algebra Introduction to Business, um, Trigonometry, Pre Calc, Public Speaking, Introduction to mac Microeconomics, English <coughs> Composition and Argument. General Introductory Psychology 1 and 2, because you can apply for a series of courses. Um, and I think those will be weighted more heavily um, for a series application. Human Anatomy and Physiology 1, 2, and 3. Introduction to Biology 1, 2, and 3. Calculus 1, 2, 3, and 4. Statistics 1 and 2. Introduction to Sociology 1 and 2. Financial Accounting 1, 2, and 3 in parentheses. I'm not sure what that means. 
um, Introduction to Chemistry, 1, 2, and 3, and U.S. History, 1, 2, and 3. So an introduction to business was on the list. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And there's more money available with these. With what about grant. industrial safety? I mean, industrial safety is such a natural for OER because of all of the copyright free materials available. Sure, but it's not, so what we're talking about right now is the HEC grant. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, they've limited it to specific, to only the highest enrolled courses throughout the state. Okay. Because the goal here, it, for the, the intent behind this grant, or the funding, it comes from the state legislature. What they want to do is they want to save taxpayers as much money as possible through textbook costs so that they have more money to put back into the economy. That's the logic of the state. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. Washington State did this too. And uh, they, they I, I don't remember the measurement, but they ended up saving a lot of money. What, what about uh, human development? HD 100, 101. So that's specific to Mount Hood. So the first half of our session, which we recorded,